RJ, I know we talked uh, after the game <coughs> day about your father. I can imagine what he said to you after the, the last second shot uh, against George Tech. <laughs> what, 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 what he said with you? Anything that you can share with us about that call or no call, if you will? Um. <laughs> um, he, I, I probably couldn't share with, with you guys, but uh, he definitely said like I could have settled for uh, I had the three, briefly, or you know Tom Cross over to my right, kind of get to the right, but yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Otherwise, that play kind of worked exactly the way it was designed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely did. I mean, Coach Fred and the rest of the coach staff did a good job, and that's something that we practiced um, multiple times, and um, definitely worked out in my favor. Armando told us that you guys met in the locker room when he got back the other mm -hmm. night and said they left around 1.45 in the morning. What was what was all that about in the locker room? How'd that go? Just conversations just about like the whole game and, you know, it's obviously a game that you didn't want to lose, but at the same time, just uh, not overreact and stay stay composed and keep our composure leading up into this game. And, uh, you know, because at the same time, there's a lot of... Um, of our teammates first time playing in this UNC Duke rivalry game so it'll be really brand new um, just the overall energy and the environment that's leading up into this game but at the same time just kind of just treat it like it's the next game because it's the next game on the schedule and not get too caught up into you know social media and you know people DMing you and saying you have to win this game just kind of just ignore all of that and just focus on you know the next game and lean up our chart preparation. So to follow up on that it's been a while since you guys lost, but that's not typical that you guys would do that. A lot of this was because yesterday was an off day and just to kind of get everyone on the same page going into this game? Yeah, 100%. I mean, also because it was a, you know, a tough loss and on the road, I mean, uh, they're, not, not, they're not easy games to win. And um, we just got back, kind of just sat with our thoughts and just, um, just talked about the whole game, really, just to see you know, what worked and how can we improve leading up into uh, Duke Saturday. Who was doing most of the talking? It was all of us. It was there wasn't like just one person talking and rambling. Um, everyone had shared their thoughts. Was it organic or did someone say we're going to sit here and talk for a while? <laughs> no, it wasn't naturally. <laughs> um, just like naturally, like conversation just just happened and we were just talking. RJ, speaking of like having a bunch of new guys who have not experienced this, what have you tried to share with Elliot, especially in his role as you know point guard, freshman, mm -hmm. what to expect and, and all that. Uh, I'll probably have a talk with him today just to, ex you know, just go out there and just be Elliot. Um, you know, he's a, a supreme talent. He's you know, been playing really well for us um, this year. So just go out there and just, you know, play your game. You know, don't get too caught up in, uh, you, know, you know, the rivalry games. Just go out and be Elliot because, you know, that's what we need from him. And I think he'll, he'll play really well for us. And the way he's been playing, his, his aggressiveness, his playmaking, um, even his defense has been working for us. So. Do you remember what it was like for you, like your first, your first game, and maybe the nerves? Yeah, I definitely had a lot of ner uh, nerves. I mean, mine was kind of different because it was COVID, so like nobody was in the stand. But yeah. it's still on national TV as UNC versus Duke, so just a little nerves. But um, that, that's what I remember for it. Or he's one of the older guys with some of your favorite moments for your time playing here against Duke. Definitely the one that uh, Coach K's last game in the Final mm -hmm. Four. Those are the ones that I can. You know, I obviously cherish and remember for forever just because of, you know, leading up into the game and, you know, people doubting us and whatnot. And it was just super fun, just the overall environment, the energy. Um, I mean, those, those, and now I think the Final Four game was the most watched in uh, history, so that's one of the things I'll remember. And how exciting is it for your final time playing against Duke and the Dean Smith Center is another top 10 matchup? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been great. I think any time you play Duke, it's going to be a, a good game. And, because um, it's the best rivalry in college of basketball, and um, you know, for me, for me being a senior here and playing at the Smith Center, um, I think it'll be special. Between the the COVID, the Coach K circus, the fly, uh, the, you know, the Final oh. Four, uh, you know, now is um, uh, both in the top ten. Have you given any thought at all to to your place in this rivalry? Because you've seen an awful lot, and more than a lot of players have in this rivalry. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really thought about, you know, my place and my experience. Um, for me, it's just as, you know, just go out there and just, you know, treat it like it's a game. I mean, I, obviously, I know the historical background to the games and, you know, the rivalry has been going on for years. But at the same time, um, just try not to get myself too excited for the game and just kind of just 
stay in the moment, stay poised, um, and just you know doing what I've been doing. RJ, defensively, you guys rank um, among the national leaders in defensive efficiency with Ken Baum, higher than the program has ranked in mm -hmm. many years. I'm curious, how much do you think that's is it? You know, the, the roster is different, so you have some different personnel like with Cormac and Harrison coming in. How much of it, how much of it is maybe mentality or approach? Kind of, what do you think is the reason? that you guys have taken such a step up defensively on the season? I mean, I think we took ownership in it. Um, Coach Davis also always said that, you know, we will be, be more than fine on the offense, but it's our defense that's going to set us apart. And I think we really took um, ownership in that. Uh, these past couple of games in our running street, we was really doing a good job of, you know, containing the ball, being the help side, um, turn, turning teams over. So little stuff like that, I think that's what's going to help us win. Um, and, you know, sometimes when your offense doesn't work, you can also rely on your defense. And we've been doing a great job of just, you know, also trusting each other. I think in the, early in the season, we really weren't really worried about, we were worried more about our man rather than being on, on the help side. And we're doing a better job of doing that, communicating, talking. So I think that just comes with experience and maturity. RJ, in all of the UNC Duke games that you've played in, you've played with Armando Baycott, and mm -hmm. then obviously he played in a couple before you got here. Yeah. What do you kind of observe from him, uh, you know, in those games and when it is that UNC Duke? Like, what kind of, like, is there anything kind of that's different, you know, when he when he approaches that game and plays in that game? I mean, I think every time we play him, we always, it's always like around his birthday, so he's always hyped for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but he, he's been doing a good job of just, Anytime I see him playing against Duke, um, his leadership really stands out. Um, he's vocal, um, leads by example, and um, he does a good job of just being aggressive and making his presence felt in the paint. And I'm looking forward to him doing it on Saturday. And then, I guess, what do you remember? I know it was probably a couple, obviously it was a couple years ago at this point, but what do you remember about when you guys played in Cameron? He had that dunk at the end that mm -hmm. kind of like sealed it. You guys went up 10. What do you remember about that sequence in that play? Yeah, I mean, I was super hyped for him just the. Um, for him to end the game like that, and then I think that picture also went viral too. So um, that was a great way to end the game. So, RJ, this is going to be his last time playing here. Have you thought at all? Have you, finally, have you thought at all about like what it would mean? For, I mean, obviously, I know you have the COVID year if you want it, but mm -hmm. have you thought at all about this being your last time against them in the Smith Center? I haven't. Um, and actually, it hasn't even hit me yet. <laughs> um, I think I've just been doing a good job of just you know, staying in the moment and worrying about this year rather than, uh, you know, what the future may look like. So, uh, I mean, that really have not hit me yet. So uh, I'm just going to enjoy it, enjoy my senior year, um, and just, you know, come up this win. A couple of non-stat things about Armando that Coach talked about, Harrison brought it up a little bit earlier, is he's so much better at setting screens now, and you guys mm -hmm. are able to get more off those screens. I know you have that screen assist stat. And also, he's kind of dragging bigs out of lanes, so they're more driving lanes. Can you kind of elaborate on how much better he is at those two things now and how you're able to play off that better than maybe before? Yeah, I mean, I think um, Coach May has been doing a good job of just watching film with Mondo and, you know, working with him to how to, you know, angle his screens a little bit better. And um, he's been doing a great job for me and Ellie to get down, uh, downhill in the baskets or uh, be able to settle for an open jump shot. And, and no credit to him because, you know, most of our baskets come from his screens. So... Um, but just his impact, you know, not just from his screening, but his also defense. I think that's not getting talked about a lot. Um, this defense has been uh, phenomenal this year, you know, especially when we switch because we switch a lot. Um, he's able to guard our, you know, smaller guards and get stops, blocks. Um, he's been doing a great job of doing all the little things for us, and he's the reason why we've been winning. RJ Hubert has said a lot this year how he's showed you guys the clip of Kevin Garnett talking about defense news with the Celtics. Mm -hmm. Has he ever showed you guys like old, old UNC Duke clips like from when he was playing or even before that just to like give you guys the scope of the rivalry and all? <laughs> nah. <laughs> no. um, I think we all just know. Um, we've seen a lot of clips you know, from previous years and I'm pretty sure everyone watched us in the Final Four. So. Um, and it's not too much to get you, uh, Coach Davis fired up for this game. So, <laughs> <laughs> RJ, what were coming out of Georgia Tech? What bothered you the most, or what were some of the things that you didn't like that mm -hmm. happened to you guys, or that you guys did? It was just simple game plan and mistakes that we practiced um, and we went over. I mm -hmm. think we just we could have done a better job of you know our ball screen coverages weren't that great, um, turnovers in the first half. Uh, but you know, it was you know, one possession away. If he had missed, made two more free throws, probably up on that game. So just like little stuff like that. But 
Uh, we just got to key in on little things like that and, you know, do a better job of, you know, knowing our game plans, knowing personnel and whatnot. The month of January was a pretty good run for you guys. Mm -hmm. What did you guys learn that you can kind of carry over to the rest of the season? Uh, just always, you know, stay where your feet are and be where your feet are and, uh, you know, trust each other. I think we did a better job of doing that this year, especially in the January run where um, we were relying on ourselves, but at the same time our, our teammates to be in the right positions uh, offensively and defensively. So, um, but at the same time, just go out there and have fun. I think we're, we're playing with joy um, and, you know, we're playing Carolina basketball, so that's what makes everything good. RJ, you've done a couple of NIL things with Jeremy Roach and mm -hmm. played against him for a couple of years now. Like, yeah. Do you guys have much of a relationship, or what is that sort of like? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not often that there are two sort of senior guards who have yeah. gone through it together. I mean, I knew Roach since uh, we were like in fifth grade, so we've been always matching up with like Gauchos versus uh, Team Takeover since we were little. <laughs> um, so um, I knew Roach then, uh, but you know, we have a good uh, relationship, yeah. and yeah. you know, when. Whenever we face up with each other, I think, you know, we just put that to the side and just go out there and hoop. Beyond that relationship you have with uh, Roach, how do you like this matchup with your guards against their guards compared to past years of this rivalry? I mean, I think, you know, for our guards, we, I think this is going to be a great matchup from both sides. You know, Duke's a really talented team. They have really good guards that uh, can make shots and get downhill. Um, our guards, we do the same as well. So I think we match up really well. I'm looking forward to it. RJ, you mentioned that you know you don't need anything else to get Coach Davis fired up. For this week. <laughs> and two years ago, he said, you know, we're looking for a fight. Like, have you already started to notice it from him this week? Like the extra intensity or anything? I haven't yet because we just had just played Georgia Tech, and then you know, Coach Davis is always about um, you know one game at a time. So. I'll probably see you today in practice. Um, I'll let you guys know how that went. <laughs> Along those lines, is, does anyone get more fired up than Hoots just for <laughs> this type of thing? Like, Harrison was talking about him, you know, yeah. like running kind of hot. You know, mm -hmm. like, it, what is there anyone else? No, nah, Hoots gets, like, everyone fired up. Like, um, he came into the locker room this morning when we lifted, you know, just fired up, just yelling. Just coming to the locker room, just yelling, like, y'all ready? And, like, so, that, I mean, that's Hoots for you. So, I'm always going to rely on him for the energy. Okay, with um with Kyle Filipowski, obviously it's not something you're gonna be you know matched up against, but you know he's you know doing a lot of what he was doing last season. Just kind of yeah. what kind of added you know dynamic does he kind of give that team on on both ends of the court? Yeah, I mean he's really strong in the post and he does a good job of just using his pivots and uh, be able to score over guys and you know stretch the floor. So um, you know he's a really talented player and uh, you know it'll be a good matchup for us and see where we at defensively. Do y'all have any uh, responsibilities for like game day when they come here and broadcast? Will you guys be like, I don't know, on the show doing anything fun or silly? <laughs> that I don't, I don't know yet. Okay. Um, Just curious. I'll, I'm assuming that might be up there. So. <laughs> have you sensed like more? This is the first top ten one since before you were here. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the first time you're up in the top ten since before you were here. Yeah. Do you get a different sense of anticipation? No, I think the energy will remain the same, um, despite if we're a top ten or. Both he's on ring. I think that game will, will always be the same. Thanks, RJ. Thanks. 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 Thanks.